In this final lesson, we want to create a custom user interface to drive the curves of our movement so that we don't have to open up our Expresso if we want to change something. So right now, if I double click on our Expresso tag here, we created our movement curves in this X group over here. So the first range mapper, if I scroll down, so this was the curve we, uh, we've drawn earlier to define the up and down movement of our main body. In this range mapper, we defined a curve for the um, blending of our uh, first morph target, which was the part where the jellyfish sucks the water into the body. And we have a third curve over here, where we defined how the jellyfish pumps out the water. And if you want to change the movement of the, um, of the jellyfish or just want to adjust those curves, it's not very handy to always open up Expresso and click on all these separate um, nodes. So we want to create a user interface for that. So I will click on the master controller, which is our main controller, because if you want to move your jellyfish, you use this master controller and then just move it upwards and make a few keyframes. So it would make sense to store our uh, user interface also in this object. So with master controller selected, I'll click on user data, add user data. This brings up this window here and it created a first uh, custom control for us and let's rename this to movement. So the first one should be the up and down movement of our jellyfish. Set the data type from float to spline and you'll see that the interface changes to the one we'll all, we also see when we click on the range mapper. So the data type for curves is spline and here we can define a custom uh, default curve. So in here, I want to try to create something like the curve we uh, created earlier. So I will make two points here by holding down control and click command and click on a Mac. Unfold this one, select the first point, set it to 0.5. So those are just the exact same values that we typed in earlier when we created our first range mapper. And the curve looked something like this. Down and here upwards and we also right click link and tangents right click link and positions so that again our endpoints are connected and our first curve looked something like this so very good for this again so this is our default curve so we will, we will create a second um, custom control and we will call this one in which was our a morph target for in, for our in movement. The data type we will also set to spline. And this curve looks something like this. And we will create a third one, which is called out. Data type again, set to spline. And the last curve was something like this. Okay. Now our uh, three controls are created. I will hit OK. And if I now click on master controller, user data, you see our three curves here. So now we see them all at once. And we now need just uh, to bring those custom controls into our Expresso and uh, drive our range mappers with them. So if I open the Expresso again, bring up the window, you see, if I click on the range mapper, we have our curves that we created earlier in here. And what I now want to do is use our uh, user interface and user interface and just override those curves. So I want um, to override this curve with our custom curve, this one, and also this one. So first of all, I want to um, scale our X group here that we have a little bit more space. Bring them down maybe to here. And now we simply need to bring in our master controller null object where our custom controls are stored and create three output ports, user data. First I want to have the movement, user data in, and also user data out. Resize it. And now we need to create an input port on our range mapper to override this curve here. So, and the input port is spline. So let's create this on all our three range mappers. Like this. 
And as soon as I will connect my um, custom movement curve to this range mapper, this window here will disappear because it's driven by something else. You see, and I will connect this one also, and this one. I can clean up your interface a bit, that it looks nicer, and you have a good overview. And that's finally it. So I can close this window now. I don't need to open up Expresso to change the movement of my jellyfish. I just click on master controller. I move my master controller around. Right now it's not following because of our delay. So if I hit play, it will work uh, because we've set some keyframes here. Um, and if I want to simply change the movement of my jellyfish, I can now access uh, my curves through my user interface. So maybe we want that the jellyfish um, goes down deeper when it sucks in the water. I can simply take the curve, pull it down, and now you see that it goes way much lower. And yeah, we can change the curves in real time while it's running and change the whole look of this animation here. So this is really cool. And of course you can extend this user data here as much as you want. You can create controls for the jiggle controllers or for our delays or if you want to define how far one motion cycle should be. You can all put this in here like we did with our curves and build a really cool uh, rig for this jellyfish. But it's very useful right now how we have it here in this example. The movement looks really awesome. Yeah, and that's basically it. We're at the end of our tutorial. I hope you liked it. I tried to explain everything as clear as possible. And uh, one final tip would be, um, you don't need to know every single note in Expresso. It's just uh, good uh, or it's important to know the principles of Expresso. And if you understood that, you can always open the help file and check out what a specific note does. So this is not a problem. I always forget some of the notes and I have to um, take a look at the help file. So this shouldn't be a problem. You just need to understand how they work. And uh, it's also important to understand how a vector or a matrix works because you can do a lot of stuff with them. And yeah, one tip could also be if you want to create something with Expresso and you don't know how to set it up right, just take a pen and a paper start to draw some arrows and uh, just find out what exactly you want to calculate and then it should be easy to achieve this. So I hope you like this tutorial. Have fun with Expresso. Practice with a few setups and build awesome rigs and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.